So we're going to solve this log equation. And we're, of course, finding the value of x, it says there, uh, but that's the only variable here. Let's go ahead and examine this first. I see there's an x that's squared here. There's also another x over here. So right away, it's going to be a little bit tricky because there's two different places that our variable appears. So we'll start by rewriting this. So I am going to uh, use the definition of a log, uh, but the first thing I'm going to do when you subtract logs, the rule we have for log subtraction, uh, I'm not going to write it with the base. I'm just going to write log A minus log B. It works for any good base. This equals log with the same base A divided by B. So that means subtraction outside a log is division inside of a log. The other property we need is definition. Uh, that's log base a of x equals y. You can change that around. You can rewrite it. And again, here I'm comparing equations. That's the same equation as move the base to the other side. x equals base a to the y power. We can't use this definition yet because we have two logs on this side of the equation, not just one. So we're going to have to deal with that first. So we're going to use that top property. Subtraction outside is division inside. So it's log base 6 of x squared is the numerator, denominator x plus 3. And right side didn't change, right? So that's still equal with 1. Now we're ready. So we just used this first property. Now we're ready to use the second property. So this is the definition of moving the base to the other side. So we're just left with the inside x squared over x plus 3 equals the base is 6, the exponent is 1. Of course, 6 to the first power is 6. Now we have to solve for x, and x appears in two places. So I don't really like fractions. Let's get out of fraction land. The way we're going to do it is we're going to multiply by the denominator x plus 3. Of course, we're doing it to both sides of the equation. The reason we did this is because the left side is going to cancel completely the denominator. The right side is 6 times x plus 3. Okay, so we got to collect all the x's on one side. I like my x squared terms to be positive, so I'm going to collect everything on the left. But first we're going to distribute 6x plus 6 times 3 is 18. And now we're going to subtract the 6x and the 18 to the left side. And so we have a zero on the right. I call this solving the zero. We're going to try to get lucky and factor here. And 18, unfortunately, has got a couple of ways to factor. We draw a little factor tree for 18. Looks like we switched to green. That's fine. Uh, it could be 2 times 9, 3 times 3. So you could do 18 is 2 times 9 or 3 times something else, 3 times 6. I think those are the only ways. Of course, you got 1 times 18, but that's not going to be the factoring we want. So I think these are the two different ways to factor. All right. Let's go ahead and take a guess. I'm just writing the first one that I see, the 2 and the 9. All right, let's think about uh, signs. We got a minus and a minus. And now, because our product is negative, that means only one of these is negative. And I see that my middle term, the addition, needs to add up to negative 6. So I'm going to go minus plus. And looking at this, I would get 7 minus 7x. So that's not going to work. Um, so this is going to fail, unfortunately. Uh, we can try the other one. So we have a 3 and a 6. This is going to also fail, unfortunately. For, again, the same reasons we need a negative and a positive. All right, and this adds up to negative 3, not negative 6. So this is also failing. All right, that's unfortunate. So we could complete the square. We can also go quadratic formula. Because my uh, middle term is even, I'm going to complete the square. do that. x squared plus bx 
equals x plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. So this is how we're going to complete our square. So for us, b is negative 6. So b over 2 is half of that, negative 3. OK. So we have x minus 3 squared minus b over 2, which is negative 3 squared. That takes care of this part right there. And now we still have that minus 18 equals 0. So negative 3 squared is 9, we have minus 9 minus 18. Now, just to warn you, your algebra brain has probably been trained to always FOIL whenever you see something squared. But remember what our goal is. It's our goal to get x by itself with no friends. We just took x appearing in two different places, and now x appears once. So we're in a much better position to solve for x. Negative 9 minus 18 is negative 27. Add it to the other side as positive 27. And we'll unsquare, take the square root. That gives us plus minus square root 27. Unfortunately, 27 is not going to uh, be a perfect square. Let's see, 27 is 3 times 9 or 3 times 3 squared. So I can bring the 3 squared outside. 3 squared to 3, x minus 3, x equals add the 3 to the other side. 3 plus or minus 3 square root 3. So there's two solutions. x equals 3 minus 3 square root. Or x equals 3 plus 3 square root 3. So these are our two answers. And we'll go look at what the question asked. Sometimes they only want the uh, one of the answers, sometimes both. Uh, we also have to check to make sure that these actually solve the original. Now the original equation is here. So what would make uh, one of these solutions not work? Well, remember, the input to a log has to be greater than 0. So x squared is always going to be, well, unless x is 0, x squared is always going to be positive. So I'm not worried about this first one. But the second one right here, let's look at that. Let me rewrite the original log x squared minus log x plus 3 equals 1. Typically, your smaller answer uh, is the one that's more likely to fail in most of these problems. Where I really want to check it is right there. Can it be plugged in here? So our potential solution uh, so if we just all it, all I'm doing is checking that right there. Uh, when I add 3 to it, let's see we have 3 plus 3 is 6 minus 3 square root 3. All right, now we really have to decide, is this greater than 0 or not? Uh, before we saw this was square root 27. That's 3 square root 3. We saw that earlier. 6, you could write 6 as a square root. It may seem a little silly, but remember, 6 times 6 is 36. So 6 is the square root of 36. This is positive because we got a bigger thing minus a smaller thing. So this is greater than 0. So this is a valid solution. I guess we're changing colors again. Uh, the other one's going to work for sure because they're both positive. So when you add 3 to it, it's still going to be positive. All right, so they're both valid. And just looking at the answer one more time. Now, this says find the largest value of x. So which one is now? They don't want both, only the largest. So which one's the larger one? Should be pretty clear looking here. If you take 3 and you subtract something, that's going to be smaller than taking 3 and adding something. So this is the larger solution right here. So that's going to be the answer.